Welcome to Reclaimed Heritage, a place where we discuss traditional skills for the practical home. We're your hosts, Christy, Carrie, and Elaine. There's a reason you keep being told to create a routine. Ask any doctor, therapist, or wildly successful entrepreneur, and they'll swear by the myriad benefits of setting and sticking to a routine. Even if you are a little more spontaneous, you've likely experienced the desire to have a set schedule. Say, after a chaotic holiday season, following a gluttonous vacation, or another stressful period in your life like losing a loved one or going through a breakup. As humans, our bodies, and more to the point, our minds, crave the comfort and mindlessness that routine offers. Routine requires very little conscious thought, freeing our brains to focus on more complex tasks. This makes everyday tasks, like commuting to work, brushing our teeth, taking a shower, and so on, second nature. When we aren't thinking about those necessities, we can pay more attention to the other parts of our lives. Having a routine will lower your anxiety, because there's no conscious thought in the everyday details of life. When you're not worried about the daily grind, it can help you have more energy and be adaptable to the unexpected. Excerpt from Real Simple Magazine by Lindsay Tiger. Welcome back to Reclaimed Heritage. This is season two, episode four. And in light of all the information we've thrown at you over the past two seasons, we thought this would be a great time to talk about planning and routines because it can be overwhelming mm-hmm. if you don't have a good plan and yes. some good routines in place. Absolutely. What's that old quote? Fail to plan, plan to fail. Mm-hmm. Yes. Which is me. Listen, I love planning. It's the execution part that I fail. <laughs> so let's just focus on planning today. Oh my god, <laughs> that's the routine part. At some point, the plan needs to get the put habits to action. Have to kick in. Yes. Yeah. 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 Oh my goodness. So, okay, if we we're going to start with a question, which is, mm-hmm. w- if you could have one for the rest of your life, would you prefer a chef or a maid or housekeeper? That's so easy for me. But same. It's a maid. 100%. For you, it's not? really oh. no, hundred well, okay, percent. Oh, so oh, no. Okay, I love to cook. I love to cook. I so, enjoy cooking, but but you love cleaning. I enjoy okay. cleaning. Yes, I love I that kind of sick the person. cleanness. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the clean. But if, if, but if it was always clean and I didn't have to do it, okay. If I had to choose one, I don't mind cleaning, but I definitely yeah. wouldn't want someone. I want to cook mm-hmm. and bake and all that good stuff. The thing is, it's so easy because there's only one part. Okay, there's two parts about cooking I don't like. Shopping, which, you know, you don't even have to do anymore, really. Well, if a shopper was right. on the docket here, I think I would have picked the, the sh- <laughs> well, or the put away part, right? Like, you can, you can go online and order it. Okay, if you wanted to. I usually don't. But the part I hate the most about cooking is washing the dishes. That's what the mate's for. That's right. Oh. See, I think we would eat even healthier. If I yeah. had a chef mm-hmm. living in my home, hmm. like I could be very svelte. I don't know. I think I'd have time to cook <laughs> if more you healthy foods if I didn't have to clean. Yes, I'm, and I'm with you. To be honest, like stress is such a huge component for me in like my unhealthiness. My cortisol is crazy, mm-hmm. and when I'm in a clean home, I am a much less stressed, happier individual. I yeah. That is so funny to me because I am less stressed that I I would eat yummy food. I actually didn't even know that people existed on the planet who would pick chef over maid. I I don't even understand. I can't comprehend this. I love to clean. I used to have a cleaning business. I love to clean. See, I thought cleaning businesses were for people who need to make money. I love to clean. I actually enjoyed it. I like to pretend when I close their door that it like stayed that way. Mm -hmm. My mom loves to clean. But Lauren doesn't like, (laughs) I wouldn't say she loves to clean, but like she's good at it and can enjoy it while she's doing it. I loathe it the entire time. Now, wait, I have to clarify. I love to organize and I don't mind cleaning like in the cleaning world. It's called like dry or wet. So I don't mind cleaning anything that's dry, dusting, vacuuming. Mm -hmm. If it involves water, I'm out. I don't oh. want to do your dishes. I don't want to clean the toilet. <laughs> I don't want to scrub a shower. Gross. 
You're like Jeremiah. <laughs> yes, just <laughs> okay. But I've I'm, never liked it. It always has just given me the lick. Just picture feeling. this. It's Sunday morning. It's the crazy. You get out of the house. It's a wreck. You come home. It's clean. Like how nice would that be, right? I'm killing myself to make sure I'm not coming home to a mess. I do that too. But church. what if you could just shut the door? <laughs> Yes, but what if I could have a yummy breakfast before I leave for church? Nah. Yeah. <laughs> I just did not know that made by like me. you. <laughs> Sorry. And I know you so well. I just can't even imagine that I would get this question wrong. But hmm. all right. Well, no, I you fly yeah. that crazy flag, girl. <laughs> we'll let you stay. <laughs> okay, thanks. <laughs> you have a planner, therefore you can just stay. Just add it to the weirdness factor. <laughs> uh, yes. Yeah. Okay, so we... Oh, yeah all are very excited about talking about planning and routines. It mm-hmm. is kind of something that we enjoy. I do all for of us fun. enjoy. We kind of do for fun. <laughs> In fact, as we're sitting here, one of the dear ladies from our church, Amanda, she just texted me, which is funny because I'm about to share a story about her. So good timing. Yeah. Um, she, she has known many of you guys for years, but they just recently moved up to Ohio. Mm-hmm. Her husband her retired, retired from, yeah, from military. military, and they joined our church. Yeah, and she came over to my house for the very first time, and she pulled out a planner, which was the Penny Pincher planner, which yeah. I which love. I love. Yes, mm-hmm. and I said, "Oh my goodness! Like you have a planner?" And she's like, "Yes, I bought the one that you and Christy and Elaine have first. It wasn't my favorite, so I got this one." I'm like, "Oh no, that's okay. Like whichever one works for you." <laughs> she was like, "But I did realize quickly that." If I wanted to be your friend, I had to have a planner. <laughs> I was like, no. Oh, well, that's kind of true. <laughs> <laughs> no. Wait, hold on. Because at every time that we are together, at, we have at, our at anything, we have our planner. And when we don't, oh my goodness. Like, okay. Yes. I call she, it my brain. Mm-hmm. Like, I will say it to the kids, like, can somebody grab my brain real quick for me? Yeah. And I've had other kids at our home and, like, looking at my yes. just like, what? It really but is, But I really though. do call it my brain. I have mm-hmm. to write it all down. And so it does pretty much go everywhere mm-hmm. with me. Same. Otherwise, I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. She texted me last night and said, <laughs> I have your planner in my car. And I was like, <gasps> What am I doing tomorrow? <laughs> what do I do tomorrow? I don't know. I don't know. I have it back. <laughs> well, last year Elaine misplaced her planner. Oh my goodness. For a few it weeks. It was devastating. And then she would just get text messages like, Hey, where are, where are you? Are you? <laughs> <laughs> because if she can't see it in her planner, she's not doing no, it. No, <laughs> just free up her schedule. It just doesn't exist. Yeah. No. It was a little freeing, though. I was like, I have nothing She's to like, do. She's like, all this free time. It's amazing. I thought I was going to be busy. Happen? Yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay, so. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, so I would say we all have different routines and rhythms mm-hmm. in our homes that we enjoy. But the one thing that we do all share is that we are all written planner people. We know mm-hmm. many people who use electronic Right. Tried calendars for like and all the things. two months, and it was not mm-hmm. a good fit for us. No, no. I need to see it mm-hmm. all out in front of me. Not, I don't want to click on the day on my mm-hmm. calendar. No, that does not work for me. No, no, no. I, I like setting reminders and doing some things mm-hmm. on my I phone that, that help with my efficiency. Right, right. But as far as I, I do, mm-hmm. I like to see it on paper. Right. And I've yes. done all kinds of stuff. We've, I've done bullet journaling. I've done, mm-hmm. you know, same. Yeah. To get the creative side, but um, our current planner is my favorite I've had so far. Same. I don't know that I'm sticking with it another season. Well, so, I mean, a year. I know. Because you've yes. already bought for the year. But, yes. Well, yeah. like so through the end of the year. But mm-hmm. yeah, I um, have some new friends at work who do the planners as well. And mm-hmm. they've been making some recommendations. And there's some things that you can like actually make your own and they will spiral hmm. down it. So. Mm-hmm. This was on my list. That's really funny. (laughs) We went to a homeschool convention yesterday, and you and Elaine purchased a A homeschooling homeschooling planner. It was gorgeous. And part of the reason, which it was, it is very beautiful. But one of the reasons I didn't get it is because I was planning on making my own. Mm. So I really want to combine. I love Penny Pincher. Hers is phenomenal. The Mm -hmm. ones that we are currently obsessed with is made by She's in Her Apron. And Mm -hmm. we love them because Mm -hmm. she does four months at a time in a planner. Mm -hmm. So when you're, it is a full size planner. Quarterly. Yes. It is lacking for nothing. And, um, but it's a smaller 
like it's smaller than a whole year planner that you are sticking in a bag or carrying around with you. So mm-hmm. it only gets cumbersome when you're getting to the end, mm-hmm. and then you need to carry. Yeah, like two, right now we're yeah. which is about I'm right writing in May, right. so mm-hmm. I have April down here, but May is upstairs in my bag. But yeah, probably like many, and we know some other women. Like when you've used many planners over the years, you figure out what you love mm-hmm. and what is like just wasted space, mm-hmm. the things that you need. So yeah. I yeah you know, I think yeah by next year it'll be I'll be excited to try one. Good. Um, so those are the actual planners that and bullet journey journaling, which mm-hmm. you said is one of one of my our other favorites. But so having something to write it in, even if and so all three of us listen to Misty Winkler. Mm-hmm. She has a podcast, the Convivial Homeschool. Yes, the Convivial Homeschool. It's her yeah. book, yeah. I think her she podcast is Simply called that Convivial. Too. Simply Convivial, mm-hmm. that's right, is her podcast. Yes. She gives awesome organizational tips. Mm-hmm. One of the things that she really does well is talking about reviewing your week, mm-hmm. which I didn't always do. It's mm-hmm. very new to me that, you know, like every week I would write down what I would hope to accomplish and that it doesn't. And the right. next week I'm rewriting it. And she really focuses on like reviewing your week. Mm-hmm. Why didn't it work? If you just rewrite it the same way, chances are it's not going to work again. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, And this could be applied to whether you're homeschooling, not homeschooling, any of the skills that we've talked about. You know, my plan is always to make sourdough bread a certain number of days that week. And then I'll get to the end of the week and I haven't made it one time. Mm -hmm. So in reviewing, right? Mm -hmm. It's it's the just planning well. You you have to you have to set up the times and routines. Mm -hmm. Well, it's like Weekly. your money. Um, we're going through this financial class. One of the gentlemen at our church is running it, and it's fantastic. But, you know, just like you budget your money, mm-hmm. if you don't budget your money, then you don't know that you have no money to do the thing. So with mm-hmm. your time, it's the you same. Tell like, it if you don't budget yeah. your time, then you actually don't mm-hmm. even know what you can say yes to or what mm-hmm. you can right. say no to. Because a lot of times where the discouragement comes from, we're not getting to it, is... right. You actually don't know how much time you have yes. to do these things. Or a lot of times we think something can be done in five minutes, mm. but in all actuality, it takes 30 minutes. Longer. On yeah. the flip side, which tends to happen to me more, is I anticipate something taking a long time, so yes. I don't want to do it. Yep. But then when I, like the, the sourdough is one of those mm-hmm. things. Like it does not take long for me to put the, the dough together. Like that mm-hmm. is so fast. But I've I didn't done that where that I time myself I to see it. how, right. you know, what if exactly. I've been procrastinating and really how yes. long did it take? Yes. Yeah. So even just looking at the natural flow of your yes. day. So if you look at those natural, it's a lot easier. You know, we talk about people having a bend to something. Mm-hmm. If you have a bend to something, you can slowly tweak things and bend it this way and that a little bit. But if you try to, um, be too abrupt or too harsh mm-hmm. to break the thing. Mm-hmm. So a lot of times I think we come up with these <laughs> schedules yes. that are not our natural bed. No. Like, I'm going to do know all the things in the morning, but I don't right. get up. I'm too and tired And you're not a morning, morning person. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. yeah. No, it's good. Fly Lady is really good in that way, too, mm-hmm. which is another, if you've never heard of Fly Lady, she's probably, I would say even more than a planner we would recommend. I would Absolutely. recommend doing her. I'm a huge mm-hmm. zone cleaner. So, she's yes. mm-hmm. phenomenal. Yeah. She her Her book has been out forever. I mean... Like, it's just great habit forming ideas is. and um, good routines and yep. where to start if it all is overwhelming and you mm-hmm. just feel like you can't get out of it. Hers is specifically on keeping home. So mm-hmm. she's not going to really dive into any of like the kitchen skills mm-hmm. that we talk about. But she's really great at starting where you are. Like we keep saying, right. do what you ha- can where, where you, you are. are. Mm-hmm. You have all of these. Right. This is her. So she's not going to tell you to go out and buy a ton of stuff or like you're doing your whole house in a week. I mean, it's a very slow process, but building really slow routines, small mm-hmm. things that you're just learning to do. I mean, I okay, this is going to sound so stupid, but like mm, 20 years ago, I remember reading an organizational book and it was fantastic. But one of the things she said was just like so simple, but I had never been raised necessarily that way like to think about it but it was something like you know if you're making a a drink mix so like you have your bottle of water Mm -hmm. and the thing that you're tearing open to put in to mix just just paying attention to how many times like you pick up and put down something Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so it's tearing the top Mm -hmm. holding the top that you've torn in your hand dumping it and then instantly like you're just gonna throw it away versus like setting it back down on the counter shaking your bottle then picking it back up 
Now, this takes no time. We're talking mm-hmm. about seconds of time. Mm-hmm. But if you would think about that mm-hmm. in everything that you're doing, right. you really do save yourself so much time in just, mm-hmm. like, I really do, I get my mail and I stand by my trash mm-hmm. can outside. Same. Yeah. I don't even bring anything else yeah. because 90% of it it's is trash. trash. Right. But when the kids get it, they bring in the mm-hmm. mail, they stick it in like a mail slot mm-hmm. and I'll turn around and there's... I mean, hundred a uh-huh. hundred pieces of mail because, and it's sweet, but mm-hmm. even just the time of like now someone's touching it again. Yes. And so it's really little things that just when you pay attention to your day, there's uh-huh. probably stuff that you're you can save time. Oh yeah, by even doing better. Just looking at everyone's natural tendencies, so you can either fight it or go with it. So. For instance, I have two spaces when you walk in. There's like our shoe caddy. Mm -hmm. There's a space on top. And then there's a little thing in the hallway. Everyone in my house is going to stick their keys in one of those two places, plus their wallet Mm -hmm. and their sunglasses and and a pocket knife. This is like Mm -hmm. the deposit from all my sons and my husband. I can keep telling them to go put it away, but they're just not, they're not going to. So Mm -hmm. I stopped fighting it. So there's a basket for, as soon as you walk in for keys, there's a basket for sunglasses. So just looking at what does your family naturally do instead of mm-hmm. fighting it, mm-hmm. look at it m- and make a space mm-hmm. for it that keeps it organized. Yep. And now it's yep. not mm-hmm. strewn about and they know, like, I walk in, keys mm-hmm. in the key basket, sunglasses. <laughs> and I would say all of us with big families, like the bane of my existence. Shoes. Shoes. <laughs> Sonder shoes. Oh, yes. so- don't even get it. Socks is like. Yeah. But, <laughs> That's why I love summer. <laughs> Crocs I, yes. and flip flops, folks. <laughs> but I would no, love if they would take with the shoes, shoes upstairs <laughs> or line them up nicely. It just doesn't happen. No. It just doesn't happen. So same like you. We're like working me. on this habit yes. at my house in there. So there is a lot of push ups happening, mm-hmm. and I think it's going to turn into laps around the house. I, <laughs> they need some more cardio in. But I, yeah. we have a huge shoe rack mm-hmm. that my husband mm-hmm. made right outside the back door. Mm-hmm. That's where they need to go, and mm-hmm. it's convenient. So, so yeah. it's mm-hmm. not that it's not in a good spot. No, <laughs> that's very different. right. Yes. <laughs> Well, they're touching them to take them off, so just place them right. on there. It's really, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, we're working on it. <laughs> they're gonna, either going to be really buff mm-hmm. or, I don't, shoeless. I don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> or homeless. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, be super realistic in your daily routines. Yes. Right. I would mm-hmm. say I'm not a morning person. It. I don't ever, I try not to schedule things early that I know I'm not going to complete. But we will do a lot of our cleaning after dinner. Or right before dinner, but like, yeah, we do a lot of before dinner and then we do a, a little quick pickup after dinner. But I mean, and it depends on the season that you're in. Mm-hmm. Having realistic expectations within yes. your home uh, is huge. You, you know, if you're a young mom with a bunch of really little kids, your expectation is going to be different than a mom who has four teenagers mm-hmm. who are like, Many adults and their but abilities. But their help while they're young too. Mm-hmm, Utilize sure. that because that and make it mm-hmm. joyful, so that it right. isn't such a chore, mm-hmm. um, and they don't view it that way. You know, and you make it. There, this is where this goes, mm-hmm. and every time you know we have the puzzles out, this is where they go when we're done. Right, right. And if they're with you, they're not somewhere else destroying another part mm-hmm. of the house. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Well, and it's not a comparison, like. And we want to encourage you in the right way. None of us would, would, I think, purport that even in crazy seasons, we would encourage you to live in, like, a unkept home. Mm-hmm. Okay? Like, everybody has something where you've got There's illness seasons. or sickness mm-hmm. or things like that. But in general, all of us have had um, babies close. Mm-hmm. And, you know... Don't be afraid to ask for help. Like mm-hmm. people, we talk about this all the time. People are seeking ways to love and serve others. Yes. And we are a culture of no, I'm fine. I got it. I'm fine. Mm-hmm. I mean, there are people who would love to come over and do laundry for you. And fold a load of towels fold, if you feel yes, weird about it. You know, they really, they're going right? to get used. It doesn't have to be oh, hold mm-hmm. on. perfect. Did you say... <laughs> Can I come to your house and fold your laundry? Is that what I'm hearing? Because you do not let anyone help you fold your laundry. That's true. But not with my mom. So when the kids were really little, my mother used to, she did laundry all the time. Even, I mean, even not so little. Like if my mom's coming to visit, she will do a load of laundry. It's just, it's her thing. Mm -hmm. And that's well received by some families. It's not well received by all, but... 
you know, like that's her heart. Her heart yeah. is like my daughter's overwhelmed. I can come in and do a couple load of loads of laundry. Mm-hmm. I have loved her for it since, you know, my first baby was born. But but she's not like the I'm going to cook you a meal kind of person. This mm-hmm. is what I'm saying. So if my if I was always saying don't no I'm fine, no I'm mm-hmm. fine, please don't help me. Right. I'm sh- her, that is her way of serving mm-hmm. and loving is cleaning. And I would say ask your husband if you're married, mm-hmm. if you're a young person and married or um trying to establish some new routines, I would ask what his what he deems important. Mm-hmm. What would he like to be clean? Absolutely. Because sometimes they will surprise you with what mm-hmm. um, they value in that area. Um, yes. Yeah. Well, and even if you're choosing, like our conversation at the beginning is, you know, would you rather have a maid or a cook? Would your husband rather have you spend an hour cooking a really mm-hmm. great meal or cook a frozen lasagna and do all the laundry? Mm-hmm. Like, that his you answer know where may be to, different. Yeah. Yeah, yep. and where you want to put your, you know, what, put the importance. And it is okay in certain seasons to make decisions between mm-hmm. those two. It, mm-hmm. It's not always, we are not here to tell you that our houses are Mm-mm. always clean and our meals are always fantastic. It depends on what not. time of the day you stop by my house. <laughs> yes. Is it after yeah. the cleaning time or before the cleaning time? That I am all for that. Right. Like, I'm sorry, but we live here. Mm-hmm. And there are a lot this of people living here. And yeah. those mm-hmm. people that truly love you and are there to see you don't right. care if there's some Cheerios on the floor and, you know, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. A load of laundry sitting on your couch. Maybe they will offer to help fold it for you. <laughs> right. I do always <laughs> save my laundry for when you guys We're going to hang out. Yeah. Because then we can chat. I fold laundry. That's true. But, but 15 years ago, I would have never... Mm-hmm. I would have never folded my laundry in front of having friends over. I felt like we needed oh. to be entertained or, yeah. you know, like, let's... Mm-hmm. I don't know. it, But... I still fight the urge. My, my older teens are like, Mom, you want the house to look like no one we're lives going to mm-hmm. show it, on, like we're mm-hmm. selling it. Yes. Mm-hmm. And yes. Mm-hmm. I, I really, yes. I mean, yes. <laughs> mm-hmm. I do value vacuum lines in the carpet. <laughs> yes. But um, you got to vacuum your way out of that. The reality room. is that we, I'm just not there. Mm-mm. So, yeah. yeah. You no, know, and you don't want to sacrifice the time with your children. Right. Mm-hmm. On the altar of a clean house. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, so yes, we do want a clean house. Which would not be my husband. My husband right. would mm-hmm. say, absolutely not. That's, right. you know, right. not where right. we are going to spend our time, mm-hmm. yeah. skills, and yeah. When we talk about seasons, um, when we've had busy seasons, babies, whatever, we'll switch to paper plates. Mm-hmm. We'll switch to simplified lunches on a napkin because dad's mm-hmm. not home and the kids can eat something that's smaller so you just adjust and it doesn't need to be Martha you can Stewart. joyfully serve a sandwich on a napkin yes yes exactly fruit exactly and, yeah mm-hmm. and if it's nice out my kids know like yep. every meal except for dinner is outside <laughs> yes <laughs> like here crumbs outside. take your popcorn outside <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah so that's our that's our like kind of household portion it's You just need to have a routine. Mm -hmm. Now, the other thing that we have talked about, which if you guys, if our listeners have kids, one of the things that we've utilized and we still do to this day, and it's probably my favorite, was there was a book called Large Family Logistics, Mm -hmm. which I would say, even if you don't have a large family, is still an excellent Mm -hmm. read. But her tips and tricks. Yeah. yeah. Her thing was zones, which Fly Lady does zone cleaning, but they talk about like making your kids in charge of a zone. And so we're saying like little kids, like Mike, I would say probably around five years old is when they would get their own zone. So for example, one of the kids would have like the family room. One of Mm -hmm. the kids has kitchen. Somebody has, you know, front area and dining Mm -hmm. room in our house. Um, And they are um, in charge of that zone exclusively. There's no one coming to help you. And so we've done it where we've rotated monthly. We've done mm-hmm. it where we've rotated every three months. We've done six months. I think currently at the ages and stages that we have, it's been a year that they've been in the zone. And what happens is they really become the expert. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They it's, learn we're going for mastery it so mm-hmm. yeah. quickly. It doesn't seem as overwhelming. And as much effort as they put in is what they get out. If you decided not to dust your area yesterday, well, then... You know, it, it's going to fall mm-hmm. on you no matter what. Um, people always ask, well, what do you do about people who leave things in somebody else's room? Is it still their responsibility? And in, in, in us, and I don't remember her answer in the book, but for us, if it's in your room, it's your responsibility. It doesn't matter who leaves it there. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter who it belongs to if it's in your space. 
But I have loved it. And it's very easy because then I just know whose room is unkept. It's, yeah. it's easy to identify mm-hmm. who's struggling in their routine, who's not deep cleaning well. Um, and when mm-hmm. you have a messy house and companies coming over, it makes the ability to clean lightning fast. Yes. Because oh, nobody's yeah. wondering what to, what do. to do. They right. all mm-hmm. instantly have an assigned room. Mm-hmm. So we've done that for years and have loved it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, Unless you only have two children, then you may... Like, you may have yes. so many children that I can d- assign a kid per room. But if mm-hmm. you don't, well, you probably have less mess. Well, you would have less mess. Probably. I don't know. And depends you on the could kids. get two rooms mm-hmm. if you have less mess. Or, I mean, the thing is, whatever you're not assigning to your kid falls on your plate anyways. Right. So... You know, take on what you want to take on, and whatever is left over, just make that theirs. Yeah, we yeah. don't we don't do much of that right now. I, 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 <laughs> we did not transition well from four people mm-hmm. pretty much taking themselves out of the whole house yeah. equation and leaving the four littles. The problem is the others still live there, so mm-hmm. their stuff's still there, they're but they're just the not there because right. they're working or and they're in college, whatever. Mm-hmm. So. um Something that I kind of had just to improvise is I, so I link everything to um, the natural breaks in our day. So we mm-hmm. always eat breakfast, lunch, dinner. So cleaning always happens when in between they have to come yep. to the table. So they're either we're cleaning before we eat or we do it after. But before the dinner one, I go around and I have the little children follow me and I go room to room and I just start pointing like, that's yours that's yours and they just you know and Mm -hmm. those are your shoes and we just go through and and then we're done because they just strewn things all around the house so we still do clean the rooms Mm -hmm. but i've had to do that because our house is larger now it's not huge but it's larger than it was Mm -hmm. and there's the the more space you have the Mm -hmm. more Mm -hmm. i don't know if we have a space someone's going to put something on it Mm -hmm. and then when they put something on it then it's a free for all. Mm-hmm. Now there's bubbles and <laughs> Easter baskets. And, you know. Well, clutter gathers clutter. It and, does. And I, it does. my bedroom is the best example mm-hmm. of this. When my bedroom is clean, people hesitate to put things in it. When my bedroom is dirty, it is the junk room of the house. So it really, it's true. Like when you walk in your kitchen and it's clean, you desire mm-hmm. to like put the thing in the trash can mm-hmm. or in the sink or the dishwasher. When it's dirty, you just walk in and set it on the counter because. It's just one of another hundred things that are sitting right. there. So, so those are the habits. Touch it once mm-hmm. if you can. Mm-hmm. Yes. Get it rinsed or whatever you need to do, and yeah, mm-hmm. move on and, and train them seasonal. to do it. And yeah, yes. and they will. And then seasonal, which is um, yes. interesting because if you live in a suburb, you definitely have seasonal in regards to like <clears throat> doing your lawn and fertilizing mm-hmm. and things mm-hmm. like that. But it it. It feels a little more significant once we moved out. Oh, um, yeah. The preparing for winter, mm-hmm. the coming out of um, winter into spring and mm-hmm. mucking out mm-hmm. barns and doing gardens and things like that. So those are yeah. some really big. My Bible quote that I'm always saying is, he who does not work does not eat. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Same. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, that's another thing. If for us, we usually will piggyback. This needs to be done before mm-hmm. we eat before breakfast, breakfast, before yeah. we eat lunch. And mm-hmm. food is a really good motivator. Yes. It is an excellent It motivator. is. It is. Yes. And it gets done magically. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. So I think both the Penny Pincher that we talked about and the She's in Her Apron, they have really awesome seasonal lists. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm sure you guys, you can find anything that you are searching for online where they just talk about you know, things that you would classify as spring cleaning, things that you would do in the summer where it's very dry and hot. One of my things, okay, which somebody told me this is weird, but we clean, I used to clean mattresses in the summer. So I would take mattresses mm-hmm. outside, Dawn dish soap, water. We would use like a kind of what you would do, like an upholstery cleaner, and then I could leave them outside to dry. Mm-hmm. They would dry so quickly. Mm-hmm. Same thing, like we have a wool rug that yeah. we'll take out and pressure wash, leave on our driveway. Because it's 90 degrees, they dry so quickly. Mm-hmm. You wouldn't do this any other season. Right. So I'm anxious. Like, I can see the things that are dirty. Couches. We'll take couches out and wash them or pressure wash them and let them air dry. Um, stuff like that in the summer where your friend is the heat, the ability mm-hmm. to dry quickly. Mm-hmm. And then in the fall, it feels like we're just prepping for winter. So mm-hmm. all the house things that maybe you right. missed or... 
Um, but they have awesome lists in mm -hmm. both of these things that it's just stuff, you know, you forget about cleaning blinds, um, ceiling fans, lighting fixtures, mm -hmm. all the things. Yeah, That's why I want that made. <laughs> just for that just right there springtime right does feel it does legitimately feel extra overwhelming because mm -hmm. you're ready to like open the open the blinds and open the window and, and you do it and you're like oh. the new um <laughs> heating with wood through the winter mm -hmm. makes for yes. the, just oh. a dingy oh. feeling mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. you're ready to wipe right. down all the surfaces when right. you're when you know you're shutting that mm -hmm. stove down right mm -hmm. yeah. oh yeah i know we started to shut it down and then it got cold again i was like no i just like cleaned it yeah, but even the overwhelming you're talking about, like um, one way that we kind of beat the overwhelming feeling is doing everything in like 15 minute increments. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I use a timer constantly. It is very easy when you want to get into a project, you want to do it all. Mm -hmm. But if you're doing it all, then something is lacking. Either there's <laughs> there's no dinner, <laughs> kids didn't yeah. get schooled, something. So. From myself and from my children, if I like, if there's spring cleaning and we're going to go every day this week, mm -hmm. we're going to take 15 minutes in the morning, 15 minutes in the afternoon, and you'd be surprised at what you accomplish. But yes. it's less overwhelming mm -hmm. if you do that and start from the top down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So clean right. the cobwebs first, then mm -hmm. wipe down walls, then dust, then you know, right. floors. So you can break that up into 15 minute increments yes. really easily. And you can do a lot in yeah. 15 minutes. You like when, when it's time to clean their, you know, deep clean their bedrooms, it's the it's going to take all day. And I'll go, you know, 15 minutes. Let's go as fast mm -hmm. as you can. So you, and they are they are stunned at what you actually can accomplish in 15 minutes. Unless you step on a Lego and then they're out. <laughs> Just speaking yeah. from experience. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> then they yeah. sit on the floor for the 15 minutes yeah. and cry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't do this very well. My kids, if they were all here, they would be nodding their heads and pointing their fingers because I don't regulate this very well for me. I Once I get into a task... Mm. It is nearly impossible for me to come out of it. So if I've decided that like today is the day yeah. we're going to do yeah. the family room, there is like not an inch of a wall or baseboard or under a couch or cushion that is just, it has to just all be done. It, and then what's weird is if for some reason we don't, we come back, then I feel like we have to start over to, to get oh, it wow. like all clean in one day. So they laugh, and now my older ones don't fall for it. I'll be like, because I will say, it will just take us mm -mm. 15 minutes. No, they want to see they look at the, me like, the countdown. Mom, it's not going to be 15 minutes. And I do that. No, if we all work really hard, it shouldn't take us more than like 15 or 20 minutes. And then like six hours later, I'm like, don't you feel better? <laughs> like, no, they don't feel like, better. No, we do, do not you, feel better. Do you? <laughs> yeah. Well, because it's just not sustainable mm -hmm. like you can do that but mm -hmm. it's not like you can do that every day indefinitely no. but if you do little increments i mean do what mm -hmm. you want and when I you have some health that. stuff your body yes. the next day mm -hmm. is like no exactly <laughs> absolutely <laughs> yeah. not why but i mentally yeah. feel awesome yeah you, yeah yeah okay yeah but no yeah so it, i wish i was better <laughs> i wish i was better at it bite size mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i do that with books like, I don't have unlimited time to read a book, yeah. but I only read them for very short mm -hmm. stints, 15 minutes, mm -hmm. 20 minutes. At the end of the year, you've read lots of books. But if I was looking mm -hmm. for that magical time where I can sit down and read for two hours, I will never read a book. Mm -hmm. I will That's never clean a closet. <laughs> but you know this. We just had this I know, conversation. I, I, cl I think there's a pattern here. <laughs> I did. I gave up reading like 10 years ago because I would want to read the whole book. I know. I have someone <laughs> in my house that's just like you. And I'm always saying, 15 minutes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just like, do it every day. Yeah. So my solution is just don't give me the book. Just, just <laughs> don't, don't reserve the books don't. then either. I know. <laughs> so other people you like can to have keep them longer. longer. Yes, I want to keep them longer. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yes. I, no. It is... It's interesting, you guys, like, because every home has different routines. Mm -hmm. There is no right or wrong way. Right. And if somebody is telling you that there is a right or wrong way, they're wrong. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> the irony of that statement. Um, but really, like, even what your mom did can't be what you do. My mom and I keep it's a different house, house totally different. Different yeah. kids. Different and it changes husbands. every year. Outside season. the home. Homeschooling. Right. We're, mm -hmm. We are kind of doing it. Uh, first generation here mm -hmm. and figuring all of those mm -hmm. things out mm -hmm. and how to do it well and still maintain joy i have i i have yes. yet to figure that one out i Same. don't think i will this side of glory honestly <laughs> if i'm if, yeah. yeah well and i've done i've been there where there was a time i did i thought it was impossible for me to have educated children 
a clean house and food, food to eat. Yeah. Like, I just couldn't. But it's because I was trying to, like, even with my homeschooling, I, we Kill are going to do yeah. all the things. Yeah. You know, well, but then the house is a mess. You know, mm-hmm. so we have to take two weeks out of school just to get the house back in order. You know, mm-hmm. right. And it's the, so the daily habits it's, and routines. It's yeah. the daily habits and routines, which is where we started with the, uh, even, um, you know, the beginning, I used to micromanage my schedule. I had a schedule. And I was always felt defeated because we could never keep up with the right. schedule. What was that homeschooling book? I had it. Like, Managers color of coded. Homes. Yes. I okay. had it color coded. Uh, yes, I it was great. It was no, something it was. to shoot for. It was something to shoot but for. It would be mm-hmm. so discouraging. Mm-hmm. It was because, discouraging. Because like, the 15 minutes I thought I was going to change a diaper and put somebody down yep. for a nap, yep. they'd have a blowout. And <laughs> yeah. then I'd be washing right. sheets. Mm-hmm. And then I'd be off schedule with whoever's reading was mm-hmm. next. And yeah. I never, I don't think I ever achieved one of those like, Everything just right. every check mark hit right. on those days, but that routine. Yeah, it was. A, it has a floatier yeah, day. It was a dartboard right. to shoot at. So it was. Sorry, Terry Maxwell. I did sorry. love it. Yeah, and I love the little stickers, and it, it did help me know. Book. It did help me understand how many things we could actually fit in a day. Because right. I think and I flow. had like thirty six mm-hmm. hours worth of things I wanted to do in a twelve mm-hmm. hour day. So for that, it was. Well, and this and is where Misty's habit of, yeah, of going back and reviewing mm-hmm. right. and saying mm-hmm. what worked well, what didn't. Well, you know, I set nap time too early, so right, right. that's when you know mm-hmm. I would have an issue or mm-hmm. laundry wasn't getting done. I somehow missed that on the schedule, you know, for a couple of days, and then <laughs> you go to Laundry Mountain. You, right? Well, she so, doesn't. Okay, I haven't done her whole program, which is a program. You can do it, sounds amazing. I know someone else who did it and loved it. She does talk a lot, she'll like give snippets of her program, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know, for free at her podcast. Yeah. And one of the things she talks about is um, f- never having more than three things mm-hmm. in a day. And mm-hmm. I, it has yep. like the last two months, I have thought so much about that. If I, if you could see my planner, mm-hmm. you will see days where I literally have 20 things written down, and then other days where I don't have anything written down. And it's the carrying over from one day to the next to the mm-hmm. next to the next. Bite like, size. just yeah. kind of. But her thing was three things. And yep. what's interesting is she is a homeschooler. And we know that not all of you are. But she has said, like, Monday through Friday, one of the things she has to do mm-hmm. daily is homeschool. Right. And it isn't a 20-minute activity. Right. right. So it is always one of her three things. Mm-hmm. Because it is one of her top three priorities that she's completing in the day. It's a significant portion of her time. And I was like, that's so interesting, because if you look, I will write school, schoolwork on our thing. But if you had said to me, like, what is your, like, if you were going to do three things today and asked me, I would never have answered school. Because to me, it's just like a gimme. It's a it's a gimme. Yeah. I know we're going to do it. But to hear her say, like, the time and the mm-hmm. importance, like, it should always be one of your three. Well, that only leaves me two other mm-hmm. things that I could put on that list every day. Right. It's kind of humbling. Do people still have, need to eat? Is that I know, on your list? I know, like, I know. Yeah. <laughs> well, she was talking There's about that. She said, like, if your husband's, yeah. like, a big dinner guy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, that's two. Right. So that leaves you, like, one other thing that you're accomplishing, which is big. Like, you could say, today is my laundry day, or today is my bathroom day. Gosh, or I'm going to read a book and do nothing. <laughs> <laughs> is she the one that brought up the MIT, the most important task of the day? Is that her or I don't know. Mm-hmm. I think it's so. something that we that. do. I, I thought I, I don't know where I got that from. But, um, okay, so there was a statistic that people who write down what they, their most important task, or what they need, the three things, whatever, mm-hmm. that they need to do to the next day, when they do that the night before, they're 70% more mm-hmm. likely to actually do it. Mm-hmm. And one of the reasons is... You spend so much time in the morning just figuring out what you actually need to, d- mm-hmm. to do. But if you know, like, this has to be done, mm-hmm. um, even, like, if it's this, sometimes my most important task other than school, like, something to get done mm-hmm. in the morning is preparing for a podcast yeah. episode. Mm-hmm. So if I didn't write that down the night before, I might squander away 45 minutes in my morning. And, right. when, and when I know it's there, I, I, that's, I do it right away. I can mm-hmm. get that done. Mm-hmm. That, though that laundry has to get in or... Mm-hmm. Whatever it is, but that most important task, and it really just sets your morning right. So we've tried hard to do that the night before, Mm -hmm. is to write down, like, what am I going to do when I first get up? And it's amazing. I'll actually do it. If I don't, I really do kind of go... I've been drinking coffee for like what an hour? How did that happen? You know? Yes. <laughs> yes. Well, and, and including your family. So we were talking right. on the way here to podcast today. We had a miscommunication in our family. 
and as the kids have gotten older, it's gotten more important, and including our hus our husbands and all of it. Like people like to know in our house specifically, but I think everyone like what the pl they will say, "Mom, what's the plan? Mm -hmm. What's the plan today? Mm -hmm. What's right. the plan this For the week? week. Um, right. Where is every going to be? Everybody going to be and when? Right." I like to know what days is everyone going to be home for dinner. Mm -hmm. um, it's a courtesy thing, right? Mm -hmm. So if I'm sharing with the rest of my family, they're excited to share with me. My kids, when they were little, and my little kids, it's funny. They, like, have their own planners that they mm -hmm. will sit down and yeah. map out their day just to see the routine. Yeah. So, But in tying this with traditional skills, so if you looked a couple hundred years ago, our great grandmothers great great grand great grandmothers were very aware of their time mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in when they had daylight seasonally yes. seasonally right. um and our encouragement to you is like if you are in an apartment or a suburb and you're looking to move out being a good manager of your time currently mm -hmm. is super important and may give you an a realistic window into do you have time, time. Mm -hmm. Because you are fantasizing the homestead component, mm -hmm. but do you have the time truly to be a homesteader? And does your husband support it? <laughs> yes. Does your husband feel like you have the time and does right. he want you putting it towards that? Or are there small things that you can do where you are mm -hmm. that would feed that for you and your desire to do those things, but also help mm -hmm. um, and be something that he would be on board with as well? Right. Because, okay. no, yeah, well, we were, we've said multiple times in many conversations, like, you know, if you're married and your husband and you're longing to move out and, and it could be a shared dream for both of you, which we would hope that would be awesome. But if you're in an apartment and you're overwhelmed mm -hmm. with your current routine and your husband is watching you be overwhelmed, it's not loving of him to add to your plate. Mm -hmm. Like, so you may dream of milking cows. But if you're not doing well in the thing that's in right. front of you, mm -hmm. adding to that would right. be potentially seemingly unloving to mm -hmm. your husband or just seem like it may just seem unrealistic. Right. Mm -hmm. Did you have something else you were going to add? Well, I was going to um, just add that when you decide you are going to add some things in, um, mm -hmm. try not to take too many things all at once. Like mm -hmm. make very, very small changes. Um, you don't stick to anything that is not sustainable in your life. So if you know you decide I'm going to make sourdough bread every day and bone broth mm -hmm. and this, I'm going to mend my clothes. You're not going to you're going to stick to that for like one week and mm -hmm. realize I haven't seen anybody done mm -hmm. anything else. So mm -hmm. it's just take one skill, find the natural part of your day that that fits. So maybe it's a kitchen skill. Well, if you're in the kitchen in the morning, it makes sense while you're there. Mm -hmm. Do that, and then once you can do that comfortably and it works and it's not taxing then add the next thing mm -hmm. in but i think we're all have been guilty at some point in some yeah, facet jumping in. where we've jumped in yes you know head first and then you're literally drowning and then you just stop doing any mm -hmm. of it and that's just not helpful right well and and you can attempt to budget the time currently in what you think you'd be doing with something else i mean mm -hmm. i wish somebody had said this to me like you're gonna move you want to get dairy goats well that's awesome before you move, are you spending two hours a day reading about keeping goats? Because that's the time commitment you're about to spend to caring for them mm -hmm. in actuality. So right. if you don't have two hours right now to spend time learning, then you're not going to have the two hours to spend time caring. Right. And and that's that's in any regard. So, you know, you may not have a huge garden, but if that's your dream then spend the 30 minutes you'd spend weeding every day right. on reading mm -hmm. about having a garden. Mm -hmm. Yes. Or So just, it's again, doing what you can where you are, mm -hmm. but being realistic in it. Right. It looks beautiful on Instagram, but all those things that you see the people doing take a very large amount of time sometimes, depending upon what your dream mm -hmm. is. But And mastery takes, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. even more time and skill. Yes. So being joyful where you are, doing what you have well yes. where you are mm -hmm. will prepare you for homesteading when and if it comes to you. Um, we weren't. I mean, I'm just like from experience, we right. weren't. Mm -hmm. And it is very overwhelming then to try to like continue the routine that you have and add animals on top of all mm -hmm. of it. Um, we, you know, we didn't know anybody who was doing it. 
or could ask experience or what we were getting into. But yeah, read. You can trust me. You will never. This will not come return void. Reading, talking to people, go to visit mm-hmm. farms. Mm-hmm. I mean, there right. are so many things you can do that would prepare you for hopefully someday doing the thing that you want. Mm-hmm. But being a good keeper of your time now is important. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Can you guys think of anything else? No. I think I'm good. Yeah. I think I snuck in all my stuff throughout the episode. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. So we are super obsessed with our planners. If you ever catch us out in public somewhere, I'm sure you'll see us carrying it. And if not, it'll be in our car. But I would encourage you, even if you're a digital planner and you've listened to Mm -hmm. us, um, writing it down is is different if you've never done it like if you're on the younger side many of them haven't Mm -hmm. but it's very interesting i mean all three of us are sitting here currently with our planners open to the month Mm -hmm. and it is something special about being able to see your your whole month at a glance you have more i didn't decorate this time sorry (laughs) yeah i don't like this i didn't even know it was april (laughs) Well, Did you lose your planner? It. No, it was gone. <laughs> Actually, I was in Nebraska for four days. That was my whole month. It was getting ready, going, being going, there, going. and coming back. <laughs> All four days. Yeah, oh, exactly. So, oh, that's good. Well, sh- please share with us if you guys have like um, different cleaning Methods tips or tips tricks or yeah, and, yeah, anything that that you think would help us. We are always oh yeah anxious to learn and do better. Um, we and love, if we broke this down, we could probably do a month worth of yeah. if we like really went into mm-hmm. the nitty gritty of routines and planning. But we're and not. it's always changing. Yeah. I think ours are always changing, and mm-hmm. we're trying to improve them, make better. And as your family transitions and changes, mm-hmm. you adjust. Yeah, just mm-hmm. have a routine. Because as soon as you have somebody in all their different jurisdictions, somebody moves out and gets married. <laughs> I know, and right? You, you don't know. Yeah, there's a okay. whole room of the house that you're like, wait a minute. No one warned me Mm-mm. that I would spend all this time raising my children. And just when they were capable people, <laughs> like, finally. And then they go, I'm getting married. <laughs> well, that was at, <laughs> yeah, at our group Wild and Free. I remember we were there. Yeah. One of the moms, like, we were sharing with them about how, like, we have... You know, adult children or mm-hmm. older teens who like can make dinner and clean mm-hmm. the whole kitchen by themselves. And the one of the moms said, "Like, when does that happen? Like, when does it get like that?" And all of us were like, "Right before they get married." <laughs> Sadly, somebody else is like, "I'd like that. <laughs> I'd like her to do that at my house. She looks very <laughs> capable in the kitchen." <laughs> yes. <laughs> Goodness. True. Thank you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Sometimes you don't get the thank you, but it's okay. Oh, yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, it's good. All right. Well, you guys, you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, all the major platforms. We're on all of the podcast mm-hmm. yes. places, and we love reading your reviews. It's very sweet of you. And we look forward to hearing from you guys. Getting yeah. your feedback from this one would be awesome. Yes. Thank you. So, thank thank you. you. Bye.